Today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual. I got sent a chassis to work on that someone tried to install, but unfortunately couldn't figure out why it wouldn't start. So today, we're going to take a look at this chassis and try and figure out if we can fix it. Alright, so I did take a look at this before I started filming the video. I haven't figured out quite what was wrong with it yet, but I think I might know. But I'm going to run you through the process of what I did before I started filming, and we'll see what happens from there. So the first thing I did was check to see if all the wires were going to the right place. So luckily, the guy who installed this did a pretty good job. All the solder points are pretty decent. Um, I've seen way worse ones, but they're all pretty good. Could be a little bit nicer, but they don't touch each other, which is pretty good. They're all going to the right place, and they're all color-coded. So I should know exactly where they go. I guess we'll start from the bottom here. The speaker has all yellow wires. And you can see them run through here. And they do, in fact, go to the correct pads right here. Next, let's have a look at the positive wires. The po positive battery tab here. Looks like it has all orange, orangey red wire. It's got three connected to it, so one of them, I assume, goes to the soundboard, which goes right here, and it is in the appropriate spot. Uh, the other wire should go straight to the kill switch here, and then the other one, I imagine, goes to the all the rest of this, the crystal pixels and the neopixel at the top. We'll check on those later. Uh, the negative, it looks like both of these are glued in, so it's not going to be very easy to take them out if those are the issue. The negative, it has a negative going to the appropriate spot, so that's good. Next, we have the crystal pixels. We can see up in here that for the NeoPixel connector, green is data, two black is negative, and the orangey red is positive. And then that connects to the orangey red pixel in there. The data is uh, this purple. And then the negative is, of course, black. Those all look, you know, they look like they're soldered in right. And when we look at the board, data is in the right spot. The negatives are in the right spot. There's three negatives. I assume this negative here is for the pixel. And these two is are for the, um, the main NeoPixel. This one here is the button. That's a button. And this should be the pixel data. Now, the next thing I did was I just took the SD card out, put on my own SD card package, because it could possibly be that the SD card was uh, messed up. So I formatted that, put in my own standard package, and then I uploaded my config. Um, it's always good to check your config upload to make sure it's all set so nothing's glitched out. And then I tried it once again with the battery, and it still didn't work, so I had to look elsewhere. The first thing you want to do when something messes up in your lightsaber is don't tear it apart immediately. Just try and go through it systematically and figure out what could possibly go wrong. And the fact that this wasn't receiving any power tells me it might be something wrong with the, um, the power things. Which means the next place I checked was here. There we go, comes right out. And while we're here, let's take a look at this pixel. Um, it looks like there's two positives going here, which is not ideal. You typically want to have it with its own positive. Um, but since they're connected together with the other pixel, I'm assuming it's not too bad, since it's not going to the main uh, NeoPixel connector. Oop. There we go. What I would do is I would just take the two separate ones and plop them on the, the positive of here or the tab itself. But it's whatever you want to do. I've had no issue either way. I think I've probably done them every which way. So let's have a look at the positive. Let me put this chassis back in. There we go. Okay. So that's back in. Let's take a, a look at this. Looks like those are pretty good. One of the solder points here might be connected to the outside pin. So the middle one typically goes to the soundboard. It looks like it might be bridging with the other one, but that shouldn't interfere with the power, I don't think. It just uh, means the kill switch isn't gonna work appropriately. So I'll, ad I'll address that later. 
but it doesn't look like this is too much of an issue. And nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video, think a little bit about the next step, and then I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so you know what? I was actually tricked a little bit. So these aren't actually positive wires, which is what I normally do. These are the negative wires attached. I got tricked because uh, the heat shrink he used was red. And they're actually connected to the negative uh, battery tab. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna remove those wires real quick and connect them together, uh, which should have the, the soundboard being connected directly to the negative battery tab and the positive battery tab connected to the uh, directly to the soundboard. So I'm gonna do that and see if see if that works. All right, so I tried that, didn't work. And then after a little bit, I realized, wait a minute, what if the battery's not charged? So I put it in my charger and it looks like this doesn't have any battery. So I'm gonna get myself a fully charged battery and then we'll test it out again. Okay, it's very difficult to put the battery in. So what I'm what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to sand down the bits of the chassis that prevent it from going in. All right, so I put a battery in and uh, let me just show you what happens. When we turn it on. It makes a little crackle screech sound. Uh, the pixels turn on, which is kind of what they're supposed to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to unwire the speaker, test the speaker, with a little test kit that I have to see if it's uh, a broken speaker, and we'll continue from there. All right, so the test kit's hooked up. Let's see if it works. Yep, sounds like it works. So I'm gonna plug it back into the soundboard and uh, we'll move on. Okay, so the speakers are re-soldered in. I have a hunch that they might have had a couple strands touching something they wouldn't at the bottom of the board, because when I took these out initially, it seemed like there were a couple strands sticking out. You always want to be very careful with that. When you solder, you want to make sure every single strand in the wire goes to the place it's supposed to be. Because even if one is sticking out, it can touch something it's not supposed to and it can cause weird things to happen. So let's turn it on and see if my hunch is right. Awesome. Yes, that's exactly right. Now, uh, I guess we'll test the buttons. It looks like this is pulsing now. It's no longer just holding its color and then this thing seems to work, so let's try a button. Look at that. Okay, uh, let's try the auxiliary. Perfect, and I think we found our answer. But yeah, anyways, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, make everything look a little bit nicer, put all the wires away, and uh, I'll see if I'll complete this, this chassis. All right, so I went ahead and completed the lightsaber chassis. I just added a bit of Loctite for the soundboard to make sure it fits in place. I rerouted the wires a little bit, I just smushed them in. Uh, I tried my best not to mess with the install itself because I want the person who made this to feel like he actually made most of it, which he did. I just did very, very tiny um, adjustments. I fixed the speaker, which I think was the main problem. I redid the, um, the kill switch, which wasn't entirely necessary, but as I mentioned before, two of the pins were connected, so that would pretty much nullify the, the use of this kill switch. So I did adjust that a little bit. Um, I fixed the speaker just by unsoldering and resoldering it. And then I just cleaned it up a little bit to make it look a little nicer and glued everything together. And that's pretty much all I did. Not much at all. He did like 99% of this lightsaber. So all in all, not a bad job at all. So. Let's go ahead and put a battery in. I'll show it off really briefly. It's my basic package. Basic package of a few different fonts that are free. Um, all the different colors, a few fun, uh, fancy ones, and some of the stock profi fonts. So I have it pulsing. I apologize for the loud volume. I'll try my best to edit it in, uh, in post-production to try and make it not murder your ears. And then you can see it lights up here. I do not have the hilt, so I can't test it in the hilt and with a blade. So I'm just going to have to assume it works and hope for the best. But in any case, I did solve the main issue of it, I guess, doing the speaker crackle or not turning on. So it's got the gesture controls. It's got 
flash. Um, the buttons work. I may need to turn down the volume quite a bit, so let me do that. Uh, but before that, you can see the cooldown effect for the crystal, which I like to do. Volume menu. Exiting there we go. Menu. Much more manageable. So, I guess to summarize all of this, step one, make sure you have a fully charged battery you're testing with, or it kind of messes with all of your results. Then also, next, check to make sure all of your uh, wires are going to the right places, and see if anything is bridging which I believe is the main issue from the speaker wires. They were bridging at the bottom of the board and touching something they shouldn't have been touching, which prevented it from working properly. Other than that, uh, you run through those basic uh, things that I showed you throughout this video, even though it was a bit rough. Um, that just shows you that, you know, you could do it too, and just run it through. Go through the, the most logical steps that you can, and make sure you take the safest possible steps as you go along because you don't want to ruin your whole thing and accidentally fry something. So make sure uh, you just go about it as logically and slowly as possible. There's no need to rush when you've got a messed up lightsaber because the last thing you want is to make something completely unusable. So <laughs> hopefully uh, you enjoyed checking out this lightsaber video and we'll go back to my face and I'll close it off like a like I normally do these days, so hopefully you like checking out this chassis. Alrighty, that brings us to the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed checking out me troubleshooting this lightsaber and bringing it to life. Let's see if it can focus here. There we go. And hopefully you guys learned something. I know it wasn't as smooth as I would have liked, or probably as smooth as you would have liked, but you got to see me work through this in real time with my real thoughts. So, hopefully you enjoyed all that, and to the person who made this lightsaber, I hope you enjoy it. You did a very, very good job. Just make sure to um, not have anything bridge your connections. And that's pretty much all you need to keep in mind and anything else that I pointed out in this video. So good job. And thank you all once again for watching.